What's up, investors? Chris Lopez here with another podcast with a very unique apartment listing with Kaufman Hagen. This one's in Denver, but actually has the potential to continue running as a short-term rental, which we don't see too much around Denver. Very, very rare. So I got the two brokers who are listing it in the studio with me. Brandon Kaufman, good morning. Good morning. And Gunnar Wilson, good morning, good morning. man. So, Gunnar. Give us a rundown, the very big picture on this property. Like, paint the picture so our listeners out there can get an idea for it. It's kind of a funny story. When we first listed this, I brought it up to Brandon. He didn't remember me saying this, but um, when this building sold last, I told him this was one of my favorite buildings in town. I know that sounds salesy and fake, but I really did. So I was Why? excited. I think just because it's one of those buildings that just like stands out. It's beautiful when you drive by. Even someone who's not in real estate, if you're driving by the building, they would go look at it and say, hey, what's that? And, yeah, just one of those really pretty buildings in town. I think there's. And you had mentioned that it was, uh, I mean, a pretty notable architect at some point designed some other buildings around town. Like it is a gorgeous building, but it sounds like you kind of know a few more layers on there. Yeah, it's this group called Fisher and Fisher. I think they were in the late 1800s and their firm was up till like 1960s. And they have a bunch of buildings around town. They did South High School in 1550 Lafayette, the Midland Savings Building. So just other buildings like this that you drive by and just go, whoa, that's a cool building. Great. So as we're going through this uh, audio, if you guys want to see video, uh, pictures of it, check out the YouTube channel. And of course, you can also download the offering memorandum. All right. So I'm really curious, actually, before I jump in this, what's the, the layout of the building account? What's the rough unit count, unit mix? How's it laid out? So it's a pretty unique mix. It has a studio, mostly ones and twos. Um, and there's a mix of two bed, two bath, and two bed and one bath. But a good unit mix. It's one of those old, unique buildings. So. Um, Units are a little funky in a good way, though. All right. So the other thing, old building, cool building, but this is a 1907 building. They sometimes come with things that this is a 100-year-old building. Yep. So what's the current condition? I know it's been rehabbed at some point, but mm -hmm. what's the rehab like? What's the building like? Right. Rehab is even an underserving word for it. I mean, it was completely gutted, boiler pulled out, every pipe pulled out, you know, freezing cold building with no light in December when they're going through renovations. So they went and rebuilt the entire thing. The city up there about the entire time, you know what I mean? Like the city just checking every single thing they do there. Everything's reported. So electrical, plumbing, roof, you know, they had to repair these windows instead of replace them because it's a historic building. So the windows, you know, even though they're old, they're just, you know, they work perfect. You know, they're even with the street, everything's perfect in this building. You know, the floors aren't creaky. The cabinets are beautiful. You know, everything is great in the... Other thing with it, the electric, electrical's been upgraded significantly because there's washer dryers in the units, there's mini splits in the unit, so that uh, each individual unit controls their temperature, has AC, heat, and so, and there's multiple in these units, even though the units are maybe 600 square feet. So, I mean, it lives really well. Wow, yeah. I think rehab was a definitely an understated word on there. <laughs> so just, I mean, fully updated and just done right, it sounds like. Mm -hmm. So while it's a 1907 building, it's very modern and shouldn't have many headaches from being old, right? No, I mean, yeah, you can walk out on these balconies. You can have six, seven people on these balconies. You know, they, they stress tested every single thing. You know, a lot of these older buildings, they do jump out to you, but you're like, oh, that's old. But like you drive by this one, you're like, they might have just like, you know, did a retro build on something new. So it is beautiful. And I want to talk to you guys about the short-term rental because I mean, you know, Airbnb short-term rental is a very hot thing around the country, Denver and Colorado, you know, they're like a top three or top four market around the country. So I know lots of people are interested, lots of people are doing well, and there's options on here to continue running as a short-term rental, uh, but kind of give us a, a rundown on, on the history and the optionality that the new owner will have. So. This originally, when they finished construction of all that, they leased it, they did a master lease to Sonder, which is essentially a company that pays the owner a, you know, an above market rent for all the units. <clears throat> and then they go on top of that and they go uh, rent it out on nightly, tri-nightly, weekly basis, whatever it is, and then they keep, the, they keep the profit there. So for the last three years, this has operated as a hotel and this apartment building. So that model of short-term rentals has been proven out really well. They would continue their lease. However, you know, the next, excuse me, with this going to market, the lease has been discontinued starting in March. 
and you can operate it as apartment buildings. We have a performer from Cornerstone, the most renowned management company in town, mm-hmm. the most dialed in management company. And that performer works really well as an investment. You know, you're talking like a four and a half cap if just you rented this as a market rate deal. This is a straight long-term mm-hmm. rental? Oh, wow. Yeah. And so with that, this building is fully furnished so and and all the furniture will come with it so about a hundred thousand dollars worth of furniture pictures what have you is coming with the property so to not you know do it on some sort of short-term rental basis where even a monthly rental with traveling nurses with just corporate leases anything like that is gonna you know bump those rents 200 250 so your performa can creep into the five five and a quarters five and a halfs where I mean, that's like a, what you're getting on like 1950s on renovated post renovation buildings. So that opportunity for an investor here to trade out of something, to just place capital into a building that has no deferred maintenance, nothing that needs to be done is just like, it's an incredible. So that's why this is being marketed very quietly. You know, it's obviously going out on podcasts, but we're not going to put this on the market. We just want, you know, someone to be able to appreciate it and and close on it, you know. Talk more about that because I know you you were a gunner. You were saying this is a uh, one of your favorite buildings and uh, very you know I'll say you've got you know, that some emotional attachment to it, which sure. is very rare. Yeah. Well, the, further what Brandon was saying too, I think what's cool about it is we have the cornerstone numbers. You can just run it as totally hands off, and they can go do their thing. No, I have to look at it, but it also has the opportunity to do the short term rentals, depending on how hands on you want to be with it, with its close proximity to St. Joe's um, right down the street, I think you're saying with traveling nurses. So I don't know, it has a bunch of opportunities, different ways to run it. Um, so I think different types of inventor- investors can look at it. It's not just the right down the middle of the fairway kind of guy. Great. I mean, I love turnkey assets have options like, you know, those are great plays. What is the what's the price on this? Nine million dollars. OK, so nine million dollars yeah. for a 20 unit, really cool building. And I think you had mentioned, Gunner, um, that there is the option to actually add a unit or adjust the layout somehow. Yeah, there's a community space right now. So I guess it's really up to whoever the next owner is if they want to keep that community space for the tenants. Um, it already has a not a shower. Um, plumbing. Some plumbing in there. Mm-hmm. So you could go add a bathroom and create a studio unit, which I think it previously was. If yeah, legally not. you can so, do it. So um, it's not just like tying it to the house meter. It's actually like there's a there's a meter associated with it. It's just per the last ownership it worked better for like as a hotel to okay. have this common area and if you want to convert it sound like it's not too hard to convert it to a studio or back to a studio right mm-hmm. okay no. yeah plumbing yeah, 20 is 30 that. grand something like that yeah okay so anything else know about this notable about this property that you guys want to mention i mean gunner lives in this location and i think the location <laughs> is an extremely I guess sweet location. I mean, you're talking uptown, yeah. 20 restaurants within a quarter mile, the Fillmore, the Ogden. And if you look at the aerial, you know, I imagine we'll highlight this page right here, but like the city is right there. It's three blocks away from from downtown. So those corporate leases obviously are gonna come into play here. And Gunnar, you live there, do you wanna? Yeah, just three blocks to the east is the hospital, like we were talking about earlier, go a couple blocks north here in Uptown Square with some restaurants. Obviously that whole 17th corridor is filled with cool restaurants. Um, like Brandon said, I live over there, so I obviously like the neighborhood. Cool, so you can do showings and give people the neighborhood tour yeah. as well, right? Stop at my place after, <laughs> grab beer. Uh, so if you guys want the details on this building, the Essex, um, reach out to Brandon, reach out to Gunner. You guys have an offering memorandum on there. You can share, has financials, has pictures, lots of details, uh, which I like. And just to highlight as we wrap this up, like something that I want to continue highlighting in our podcast and as you guys are out there wheeling dealing, like the marketing we're doing with these properties is very unique and very distinct from other brokers around there. I mean, the fact we're recording podcasts, we're doing digital ad blitzes, like it is very, very cool. And Gunnar, I know you, you know, you've been around the block. You've had a very successful career here as a broker with, you know, very good firms around town. When you see this type of marketing, like what value does that add to your clients as you're out there selling the properties to get them the highest and best dollar? I think a lot, I was actually kind of personally shocked um, just because I haven't fully been behind the scenes like Brandon has been with the marketing stuff. 
But about a week ago, I pulled up Denver Post, read it every morning. And uh, first thing was Brandon's face and our company and the most recent property that he was uh, marketing. And I didn't know that was going there. So that's kind of cool just to be working for the company and not knowing that was going to happen behind the scenes. But yeah, it's been awesome to see Kaufman Hagen dumping a ton of money into marketing and getting the properties out there. It's, yeah, for a short lived uh, career here so far, it's been awesome. Cool. Love to hear it. I mean, if you guys have any questions for property, obviously reach out to Gunner, reach out to Brandon. If you guys want to see what the marketing difference does, reach out to us as well. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank, Thank you. you.